Monday night with JL Media is back. It's Blade Runner, Mandy. We are back. Hamilton 16 IMAX, good, rich, quality theater in the beautiful Hamilton Town Center is where we are. It tonight. is. It's beautiful. I've been looking forward to this movie. Me too. My old man crush is in this movie. Oh, my God. Here Harris, we go again. Harrison Ford, my he, old man crush. And Ben Affleck is your young one? My younger one. Younger? Yeah. Did they go even younger than that? Are you a cougar? Is that what you're saying? I might be. I hope Harrison Ford. It's Ford, okay. It's acceptable. We know how you feel about Ben Affleck doing workouts without his shirt on. Oh. I hope Harrison Ford, now he got to be 70. Yeah, he's kind of old, yeah. but he's still good looking. We have a cast of characters here this evening. Pun intended there, Corey. <laughs> Would you like to introduce them, Mandy? <laughs> I would love to okay. introduce them. You caught me <laughs> off guard there. Um, so first up, we have Josh from Stillwell Manor, where we're going to be next Friday. I am excited about the haunted house. Friday the 13th. Stillwell Manor, brother. Yeah, we can't wait to have you out. How long have you been with Stillwell? Do you own it? How does it work? Uh, my dad owns it. I am in charge of marketing, directing, building, acting. Yeah, I'm the guy's <laughs> guy. Jack of all trades. That's right. Josh of all trades is what we're going to go with Josh tonight. of all trades. I love it. That works. Absolutely. We also, we actually already had a guest from this awesome show on the last movie night, but from the House of Wayward Men, we have Corey tonight. So we got, we're changing it up. Hey, brother. What's going on, Johnny? House of Wayward Men is a cool flipping show. I, they've got the pilot out, Mandy, and I've seen it at least 10 times. And I, I still like Antonio. He's got one scene, and, and he did what you did. Corey plays Eddie, okay. Now, Eddie is a handful, to say the least. Uh, yeah, you could say that's one polite way to put it. Um, <laughs> he is uh, kind of the rebel rouser of the house. I mean, everyone in the house has their own uh, point of expertise, sure. maybe I should say. Sure. And uh, he's kind of a douchebag, <laughs> to be quite honest. The whole premise behind the show is these are 30-something-year-old guys living in a house together. They have a band. They're trying to make it big. Yeah, it's about losers. Okay. Right. Yeah, pretty, pretty much, yeah. Okay, no offense to all the losers who are listening right now. So we didn't <laughs> I mean, mean that with you. the utmost respect. I, I seriously do, guys. Now, everybody <laughs> knows that uh, JL Media today has a PBR sponsorship, and we literally drink PBR on the show. Yeah, there were a lot of do. beer bottles in this pilot episode. Were they full, or were you just acting? Uh, they were full. It was At one real time. beer, um, <laughs> but the beer... That was real, had no alcohol in it. Oh, oh well, that's disappointing. That is, well, yeah. it was partly because, number one, despite my character, I don't drink. Um, and also to keep uh, any temptation away from when you're doing a 13 hour <laughs> shoot. Uh, yeah. One beer can turn into 12 beers, can turn into brother, us getting nothing done. We've so. done marathon recording <laughs> sessions of Brother Brother Beer Cast where I will record six and seven episodes in a day, and I have to steady drink with all my guests. So they'll have like two or three, and I'll have three or four with each of them. So there's a lot of editing by that last <laughs> show oh is what I'm hearing. I'm <laughs> talking like this, too. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like a rough job. I, I don't know. <laughs> And that voice is our final guest, Miss Mandy. Yes, it is. We have Andrew from What's Happening Events joining us tonight as well. Hey, Andrew. How's it going? I appreciate it. Tell us of what you've done, man. Tell us about this app. So I have an app called What's Happening. And just like its name, it tells you what's happening. It'll tell you exactly what restaurants are having what specials. It'll tell you what's happening around in your community, what, uh, just like this place here tonight, it'll tell you what movies are playing. Oh, very cool. Very cool. Mandy, we need to get involved with Andrew and this app. Yes, we do. People need to log on and see where we are with our live shows. Because we are everywhere. We're doubling down on the live shows, aren't we? Yes, we are. Do you want to make an announcement right here? We've already announced it on Facebook. Let's go ahead and make yeah, it. Yeah, so we have a really world. exciting. Well, actually, we got a couple. So we talked about being at Stillwell Manor next Friday, Friday the thirteenth. We'll live be out there. From, live is be right from. Right there. In That's the house. right. And then next Saturday, October fourteenth, we're going to be celebrating the two hundredth episode of Brother Brother Beer Cast. Eighty Six Street Pub. We're going to be right there. Partying it up all day. So That's come out where and join it us. All started. And then our big announcement: we have officially signed on a partnership with the Stacked Pickle off of Southport Road. We're really excited because it is the new home of Blue HQ Media Live. Exactly. We got a sports show, Corey. Every time I look at you, I want to call you Eddie, but because <laughs> so does everybody <laughs> in the cast. Even though they all know me 
and they know the real Eddie. My character is actually based off of a, a real guy, another comedian named Eddie, and they know Eddie and they know me separately. Yet I still get called Eddie <laughs> so many times. That's the great acting chops that you have, man. You are. Uh... Hey, you are too kind. <laughs> Again, I have seen the pilot several times already, and I want to do more with you guys. I, I'm glad you like it. I really am. I uh, really am glad I, that you I like was it. impressed. I sat down with you guys, and I said, okay, this is going to be fun. But, no, I, I really enjoyed it. Really did. And well, now I'm going to introduce you guys to the man of the hour, Mr. Mitch Ross. Hey, brother. Hi. Hamilton 16 IMAX's own Mitch Ross, general manager right here. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. He was talking about Blade Runner, brother. Oh, man, I'm... I, this might be the movie I'm most excited about this year. Now, you were pretty busy today. You didn't get a chance to see it, did you? I'm not going to tell oh, anymore. I'm did. not going to tell if I've watched it or not <laughs> anymore. I want to know what you think of it. Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm excited about. Okay. So, first of all, um, do we have, a, we have anybody who's big fans of the original I am. here at the table? I've seen it several I, it's, times. It's several been a times. while yeah. since I've seen it, but yeah. Yeah, I, w I watched it again uh, before I showed up for the show tonight. It is such a great movie. And, Absolutely. Um, you know, it was so visionary for its time as far as, like, its aesthetic, the way it looked. It kind of took that whole used universe thing that, the, that Star Wars had built and then kind of, you know, showed us, like, a not-so-pretty future. Yeah. You know, Los yeah. Angeles with blazing smokestacks to the sky and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it's just a really cool story, and and uh, this director uh, Denise Villeneuve is doing some stuff. He did uh, Prisoners, Enemy, uh, Sicario, uh, The Arrival uh, last year, which um, people loved, and you know some people. Yeah, I've got to take the opposite opinion on that as well. I, I didn't on it. all of those movies. No, just Arrival. Just Arrival. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty. I, I I liked Arrival. Did you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, it, in the spirit of those, like its predecessors, like Contact and and some of those other movies that are kind of in similar veins, um, I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. I didn't think I like you didn't think it was as good as everybody else did. Um, but everyone who's seen uh, Blade Runner twenty forty nine says it's a masterpiece. Really? Yeah, and <clears throat> you know they it looks like they've taken their time. They've made sure that they've um, you know. Uh, paid proper homage and honor to the previous film, but uh, haven't been afraid to do something different. So, they have a huge cast. Oh man, of stars! Yeah, right. I won't say an all-star cast, but a huge cast of stars. Well, Robin Wright's in this, and who doesn't love Princess Buttercup? That's true. That's true. I love Princess Buttercup. I'm not As ashamed. you wish. That's right. That's right. Exactly, and uh, Ryan Gosling, who, you know, in spite of his prettiness, is an amazing actor and doesn't really make any bad choices right now. Dave Bautista, who has turned out to be really fun on screen. Jared Leto, who, you know, always turns in great performances. There's a lot of great, and there's a ton of great character actors. Um, Edward James Olmos oh, yes. reprises Absolutely. his role from the first film. Um, so, you know, I... I think people are in for a treat. And i got to say this. I don't usually do this, but I've got to plug my IMAX screen. The director used IMAX cameras for 100% of the shots of this movie. Oh, really? And it looks unbelievable on our IMAX screen. It is absolutely gorgeous. Now, I would recommend seeing it in any format. They shot it that way so that it still looks good in the, you know, the traditional formats or whatever. But it is breathtaking in IMAX. So I highly recommend it, and make sure you see it on a real IMAX screen, um, and we have one. So, <laughs> well, I recommend this is the only place you ever see anything. So, that you, and that's just my personal opinion. This is home to me. I, I do love it here, not I'm, just on Thursday nights, but you know there are, there are other great places to watch movies. But um, I definitely, if you're going to see it in IMAX, man, go see it on a a giant IMAX screen. Oh, absolutely. You know, make sure it's legit. Absolutely. You being an actor, Corey, you a big movie fan as well? I mean, everybody loves movies, but... I'm a huge movie fan. I'm a big movie <laughs> geek. Like, I, I will watch pretty much anything. Terrible movies, great movies, anything in between. I mean, I, I enjoy that medium. I, I really, really do. Right. Do you have a favorite genre? Oh. I just love saying genre. <laughs> it is a fun word, <laughs> genre. Genre. <laughs> in a world. Um, <laughs> I, I think... Uh, 
man, I'm really torn between like horror and comedy. I think that's why movies like Shaun of the Dead like really speak to me a whole lot. Horror and comedy together. I like not it. necessarily together, but there are some movies like Shaun of the Dead that, that hit the nail right on the head and do it perfect. That like they they pay the, the proper homage to both genres and just I, I'm a big horror fan. I'm a uh-huh. big, big horror fan. I that's probably my favorite because comedy, you know, it's it's very selective. It, it's, well, mine you know, as well, but there's so many subgenres. Yeah, I'm yeah. not a big uh, what a spatter fan fan. You know, all the blood and gore and everything. Oh, horror porn. Yeah, there torture, you go. torture <laughs> porn. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm not a big uh, like the Saw guy. movies and, and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Hostel. You know, I I watch them just to say I've seen them, but I normally don't go back. Yeah, uh, it, it can get a little tedious. I mean, because it. It's kind of cheap thrills at some point, you know. Right. It's just, you know, I'm just going to see how outlandish I can kill someone. Sure. And I, I mean, it's interesting to see, you know, the special effects and stuff. When they, But, I mean, does it really move the story along? Does it really move the plot along? And, and I, I prefer a good story. And a good story should be able to scare you without, you know, the little jump outs and the little, sure. you know, sharp violin well, hits anyone who's that, ever talked to me about movies knows what my favorite movie is. Oh, what's that? You want to help me with that? Mitch, what do you think it is? Um, <laughs> Here we go. Pete's Dragon. That's it. <laughs> 1978's <laughs> Halloween, the original. It's the greatest movie ever made. Oh, yeah, yeah. You did greatest talk about movie that before. Ever. I absolutely love it. Josh? Yeah. We're in talking yeah. about the horror realm. We have yeah. to talk about Stillwell Manor and Anderson. Okay, yeah. Now, are you located in Anderson? We are actually in Anderson right off of I-69, exit 226. You're making it easy for me next yeah. week. yeah. We are impossible to miss. We've got a huge light display up front, two large search lights on top of the building. Oh, very cool. Yeah. How long have you been in operation there? Uh, this is our sixth year at this location. Uh, this is our eighth year overall. Okay. Now, the employees that work there and dress up as everything, and, and what do you call them? We call them Manor Minions. Manor Minions. Yes. I like that. How many are employed there? Uh, How many are going to be there next week when we're going live there? We are hoping to have around 60 actors uh, live uh-huh. along with another 10 or so staff. So on any given night, we can have anywhere from 40 to 70 people out there working. Oh, that is very cool. That is very cool. Andrew, are you a Haunted House fan? Oh, yeah, I'm definitely about it. I was just about to ask how I get to sign up to scare people. I mean, <laughs> that sounds like a great about. job. Yeah, that's, right. it's, it's, it's fun. It is fun. <laughs> is there a training process that we go through to become an actor at Stillwell Manor? A- absolutely. We don't like just anybody go in and See, we're, we're pop out, out, out and say <laughs> boo. Gosh. Uh, we, we do have a pretty extensive training process. We have people sign up, and then we start training our actors at, actually at the end of July. Uh, going into August. Wow. Okay, very cool. That's awesome. Do you have to do, do I know that uh, like extreme haunted houses have become yeah. a real thing. Yeah. Did you, people have to sign waivers or anything, or, or how does that work? We don't have waivers. Uh, I, I'm a firm believer that if you have to touch somebody to scare them, you're not doing your job. Um, you should be able to scare somebody just by using the atmosphere around them. Yeah. Uh, the music, the lighting, the dark places. Uh, you're exactly right. I've been married yeah. twice. I know exactly what you're saying about <laughs> some scary stuff. So no one's chasing anybody with a chainsaw. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Is there a chain on it? Really? I mean, plastic one, or something. The Come ones on, outside, you might see a chain on it. Uh, uh, yeah. Just because they're using that with a sparker to hit a fence, cause an illusion. Anytime you get around one inside or anything that's going to be within 20, 30 feet of you, there's no chain. I'm around. on the edge of my seat right here. I cannot wait till next week. Friday the 13th, Andrew, live from another JL Media Today production, is going to be in Stillwell Manor in Anderson. I think we're going live at 8 o'clock. Isn't that what you said? Yes, 8 o'clock. Oh, uh, see, so that's a late start for us. We're looking forward to it. It's going to be good and dark out there. That should be fun, man. Absolutely. Stillwell Manor right here, Andrew. How could some business like Stillwell Manor get on your app and get involved with what's happening? Absolutely. Well, any time that they have any special going on, just like next week when you're going live, now they could put that on the app, what's happening, and it will show up for all the users, anybody that's in the area or anybody that's searching for anything like that. Okay, now... This app, is it all categorized? So I mean, we say we're looking for movies or we're looking for haunted houses or just what's happening, period? Absolutely. So there's multiple different ways on the app how to search events. There's categories. There's a map view. There's a list view. There's multiple different ways that you can do it. We've broken it down for people to make it easier, as in categories. Or if you want to just take a look at everything because you don't know what you want to do tonight, 
you can do it that way we as well. We could just say Anderson on Friday the 13th, and it would pop up. You got it. That is very flipping cool. So so very is your cool. app, like, interactive? Like, the, the people who download the app, they can also upload events to it? Or how, how does that work? So the businesses actually go to whatshappening.events. The businesses sign up, and they have their own page. And they're the ones that put out their events on it. And the users just download the app, and then they can then see what's going on around them and oh, what's going on cool. from their favorite business. And, of course, there's different ways that uh, it's interactive for the users as well. You can have friends. You can have crews. You can chat. There's multiple different ways to uh, oh, interact. Cool. That is sweet. Now, you have your uh, partner in crime with you here tonight, Andrew. We do. It is Thursday, and uh, I believe we talked about that last time. I was we talked about it on Brother Brother Beer Cast, but let's tell everybody what Miss Brittany does <laughs> on Thursdays. So Thursdays are, of course, for her. If you want to check out our Instagram page, Thursdays are for her. Now, this was a special thing that I could do for her to just uh, show her how much I appreciate her and uh, take uh, at least one night out of the week to uh, really show her Thursdays how much I appreciate Thursdays are for her on Instagram. Why just Thursdays? I mean, they can do it any night, but Thursdays were they our date night. They should do it on, okay. I mean, Thursdays were our date night. That was something special for us. It was the time that she had off from work, and it just worked out better for us to do it that way. So Again, brother, marry twice. Give her more than just Thursdays. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do what I give her more than Thursdays. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me, Mitch, what's going on here at the theater? Hamilton 69 Max is where we are. Well, we're uh, super excited tonight, obviously. Blade Runner 2049 is out. It's a big IMAX release. We've also got it in IMAX, GDX, D-Box, the whole nine yards. Um, we've also added a couple of 3D uh, features of it. So if you want to see it in 3D D-Box, you can do that. If you want to see it in 3D Atmos, you can do that. Um, and, of course, 2D IMAX. Um, so, you know, we've got lots of options for people. And uh, we love it when we get to bring in, you know, big, exciting films like this. Uh, but we really love it when they're really good. So, <laughs> so that's cool. Um, couple things uh, we since the last time we talked you know we've got tickets on sale for Thor Ragnarok um, we put tickets on sale for bad mom's Christmas um, exactly yeah, Mandy's, Mandy's pumping her fists over there that's <laughs> awesome uh, we also have our free fall movies going on so Friday Saturday and Sunday at 10 a.m. Um, this weekend is Smurfs the Lost Village next weekend is Captain Underpants the movie um, Wait, slow down. Corey's writing all this down. He wants to make sure he can get up here. <laughs> Captain <laughs> Underpants. Okay, he's got to go ahead. Underpants. <laughs> uh, we've got some documentaries going on. Uh, this week we're showing uh, Two Trains Running on, on October 10th, um, which is kind of a documentary, I think, on uh, kind of a convergence in the South during the Civil Rights Movement. Right. And then we've got Birthright, a war story on October 17th. And then, of course, Johnny, your favorite, Flashback Cinema. Bum, bum, bum. I love uh, it. We've I got, love it. We've got The Fifth Element on October 8th. I love that movie. And October Who doesn't? I love that movie. <laughs> that was yeah. one That's of those movies it. that I, I thought I was going to not like just based on the previews. And it, it was at the Dollar Theater. And my buddy was like, hey, you want to go? Sure. I wouldn't do anything. I walked out of that movie. Loving it. It Loving is it. impossible for movies. someone to mention that movie without somebody saying, Andrew? They love it. No, multi-pass. You just did it. <laughs> you said it when he first mentioned it, so I was hoping you'd do it again. Dude, give me the multi-pass. I think that was him that said That was that, me. That was you? That was him. I, that was me. Okay. Multi-pass. <laughs> Andrew, okay, did you throw your voice? Yes. I'm also a ventriloquist. You didn't know that, Johnny. You learn something every single week. <laughs> I was going to take the credit for it, but, you know. <laughs> I, I was uh, The first time I saw Fifth Element, I was mad because I wanted, like, a serious science fiction movie. And then I, I watched it like three more times that week, and I just fell in love with it. I thought it was going to be super corny and over the top, but it actually had like a, some very grounded elements to it. And and like when you get past the superficial part of the movie, like like there's really a good story there. Like I really uh, Zorg, I. I I love <laughs> I love everything about that movie. That movie's awesome. Yeah, Gary Oldman's like Gary the king. Oldman is awesome. He's in For sure. so many great things. Um, after Fifth Element, we have Clue on October fifteenth and eighteenth, um, which was a great movie. I loved it. Absolutely it's hilarious. Mm -hmm. Are you showing all the endings? Oh, I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, Ghostbusters October twenty second, October twenty fifth, and then Johnny The Shining. <laughs> is our Halloween no, feature this year, October 29th and November okay, 1st. Okay, well, at least it's original. 
Yes. Okay. Indeed. Should and and it is scary. That oh, is a absolutely. creepy movie. Oh, absolutely. I've never looked at twins the same way ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Every All time work I, and no play makes Jack a dull boy. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> that's and of course, <laughs> the big scene from that one. What does Jack say? Here's Johnny. Exactly. Exactly. You know what else I love? I love our listeners. And we got a question for Josh. The best or worst scare that you have seen personally? Oh, that one. The best is really easy. We were uh, coming two directions at a couple. And (laughs) a six-foot-six man who is a formal football player... (laughs) Threw his wife down on the ground in front of us and ran through a wall to get away. Wow. <laughs> wow. How many days not, date nights, Andrew, do you think would have taken to get him out of the doghouse? Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> we don't even want to talk a about that. A multitude of Thursdays, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. She already said I do. It, that, that's over. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is sad. I, Movie night with JL Media. I'm sorry. Go ahead, brother. I haven't been in a haunted. This is true, okay? And I'm embarrassed, but I'm going to tell the story because that's what I do on this show. I tell embarrassing stories about myself. Yes. And we hadn't even mentioned <clears throat> pudding, but yes. When I, when I lived on Guam, when I was like eight years old, um, they went to the youth center and, and built a haunted house. And I swear to God, I haven't been in a haunted house since, since this <laughs> happened. So there are no rules. Like, it's a bunch of the old chiefs and whatever, and anybody who wants to do it, put this haunted house together. The walls were made of like cardboard and tin foil. They put strobe <laughs> lights everywhere and it's terrifying. One of them was they were dissecting this guy and they had taken um, pig guts. And one of the guys saw me like staring at him and kind of freaking out and threw some at me <laughs> and, <laughs> and slopped me with some pig guts. That's awesome. I ran out of there. The funny thing is I heard the kid behind me start retching. <laughs> <laughs> So ever since then, I've been like, I yeah, don't know. Smell is involved I can probably in handle it now that I'm a grown man and everything, mm-hmm. but I, every time I see a haunted house or an advertisement, I'm like, oh, man, that's going to scare me. And my daughter is like, Dad, I want to go to a haunted house. I'm like, I don't know. It's pretty scary. <laughs> <laughs> that reminds me of that scene in Dawn of the Dead, the original one, where they're ripping the guy apart in a hallway and they're just pulling all the entrails out. Oh, dude, oh. that's so gnarly. It's so awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I'm huge into horror movies. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a big. No, that's I, I, I know fan. exactly the scene oh, you're yes, talking yes, about. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Made a big impression on a like six year old me. Really did. <laughs> Return of the Living Dead. How campy that was. I enjoyed that as well. I love that movie. That Is that that's good. the one in the mall? No, no, no. Return of the Living Dead. That's the one. Uh, Somebody gets the camera, the light over here, she's taking her clothes off again. It's, and a, it's a medical supply warehouse, and they accidentally get shipped some stuff they're not supposed to have. Okay. And of course, it's right beside the cemetery, and uh, great soundtrack, but yeah, it's campy. Remember Night of the Comet? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, that was weird. It's kind of... Oh, we're going back there, aren't we? Yeah. I watched all those movies as a kid around the same time frame, so I can... F- I, as ridiculous as it sounds, and I don't have an excuse because I'm in the movie business, <laughs> but I confuse those movies all the time. Like, which Living Dead movie I'm talking Like, I know right. the original, the black and white one. Oh, yes, the classic. Sure, sure. And, and Shaun of the Dead and the modern stuff and sure. 28 Days Later and all that. But, but that period of movies, like, in the late 70s and early 80s, yeah. I get all that stuff confused See, all the time. It's Dawn of the Dead and Day of the Dead that get me confused all the time. Okay. Yeah. Right. Dawn of the Dead was in the mall. Uh, Day of the Dead was on the island. Okay. Which is the one that um, Zack Snyder directed? Uh, th- you talk about the remake. Oh, that's a remake of Dawn of the Dead. Right. Remake of okay. Dawn of the Dead. Okay. That makes sense. Both yeah. of them were remade, weren't they? Uh, they haven't remade Day. They remade Dawn, okay. but not Day. Well, At least not that I'm aware a of. a resident expert here. Thank you for being here, Corey. <laughs> I've seen every zombie movie ever made. No exaggeration. <laughs> Own most of them. No exaggeration. I am Matt, not BS. <laughs> I want to make one quick comment here, and then we, we'll move on. I used to be a Civil War reenactor, and uh, the living histories and everything. <laughs> they, no, really, I did. I, I, I I, I've done it sides. as well, Johnny. I played I, both sides. The, uh, the medical tent was always very interesting because they would – get real i mean we would get real for the people who were coming out there to see us and uh, they would just go far far off they had the holes in the table you know to drop your leg in so they could saw a fake leg off but they used pig guts as well and it was it they got deep in it and i think the very first one i saw 
was before I started reenacting, I was probably 19 or 20, and it scared the fire out of me. <laughs> it looked good. It looked real. I enjoyed it. Oh, it's, it's scary, man. Yeah, it is. And it is. Yeah, and there's something about that scene you mentioned when they're ripping that guy apart. We're way off topic, by the way, but whatever. <laughs> We're talking and about movies. It's it was like night. the yeah. sound effect they used. Yeah. It was like a little bit dry and crusty. Yeah. Kind of like, <laughs> oh, man. Yes. Yes. It freaks me out every time. Scary. <laughs> Movie night with JL Media right here at Hamilton 16 IMAX. It's good, rich, quality theater in the beautiful Hamilton Town Center. We do it live twice a month right here, Mitch. Still Will Manor. Is there any big special scares you have ready for us? I need to know now. We I need to know now. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I love haunted houses. Okay. Uh, we've you know record, uh, done live from a haunted house before, and uh, my crew and and staff actually went through the haunted house. But I got to go through the backside with the owner. Okay. You know, to where I was helping because I didn't want to go through it. I was, uh, <laughs> that's another show I have to do sober, so no PBR involved. <laughs> Are there any uh, age restrictions or anything like that? We always, what do you recommend? We always tell parents, it's up to your discretion. If your kid comes in, I'm going to make sure that it sleeps with you in your bed <laughs> for the next month. Uh, if they can handle, say, The Walking Dead, they're probably fine. But if they're screaming before you even get there, don't, don't take them in. Just, just turn around, go home. We do a scaredy night or a scaredy cat night, which is on Sundays <laughs> from right 4 me, to right. 6. <laughs> We throw like two or three actors in there and leave the lights mostly on and kind of guide them through rather than trying to scare them to death. So, so Mitch will be good to go. I was just going to yeah. say, <laughs> right? That you, you, you're laughing. <laughs> That's exactly what I'm going to do. I don't I'm know. Gonna, I'm going to take my daughter as my defense. She'll be the one who's fearless. That's what I'm saying. That's the you night know? that that's the night that we're gonna go. It's not gonna be on a Thursday. It's gonna be on the Sunday. That's that's the night that we're gonna go. Right. I'm gonna bring like my line of security blanket. Like one of those stress balls, <laughs> and I'll walk around, you know, as a grown man, just like huddling my blanket, squeezing a stress ball. <laughs> Corey, what about the rest of the cast of uh, House of Wayward Men? Are they zombie fans as well? Uh, Ryan Chipley would make a good zombie. He would. He would. He's a skinny guy, man. He looks very decimated. He no looks offense. like he needs a cheeseburger. <laughs> no offense. Either. He's a good actor. I love him to death, but he looks like he needs a cheeseburger. I'll be very honest with you. Uh, he, he's a great guy. Um. Actually, when we're all together, we're just kind of talking about comedy and just focusing on the show and stuff. I, I don't really know if the rest of the guys are really into scary movies or zombie what, what movies. What about and Sam stuff. Pittman? Oh, I don't know. Sam Sam, Sam is an awkward, uh, <laughs> unusual soul. I spent a couple hours with the guy, and I'm still trying to get to know him. I like him. I, I've spent a couple years with the guy, and I'm still <laughs> trying to get to know him. Uh, Sam, Sam's a, a, a good guy. He's just uh, kind of hard to get to know a little bit. He's dry not in a bad way but i mean yeah. it's well he's it, not it, crusty like the <laughs> zombies we were talking about but he, he's hard to get a beat on but i mean he, he's a good dude and, and and i think we work very well together and our and our characters are very well together because our characters are pretty much polar opposite he's more of the we're reserve kind of control guy and i'm yeah. more of the you know throw caution to the wind in your face kind of guy at least on screen. You know, right. in real life, it's much more of an amicable relationship than what you see on the screen. But well, that's he, kind of our bit between our characters is, is the bickering all the time. He does a lot of the behind-the-scenes work as well, but he's very yeah. comfortable in front of the camera. Yeah, he, he does most of it. I mean, writing, directing, producing, editing, putting all of this together. I mean, this was his brainchild. This is his baby. Right. So I guess we can't call him too awkward and quiet. We can't talk too bad about him, can we? Oh, I'm not He'll talking He'll kick us out of the band. Him. We know that. Oh, yeah. He's quick to <laughs> kick people out of the band. <laughs> House of Wayward Men. you got to check out this pilot. This is a wonderful little show. Quick shout-out to Nikki as well. She does, was doing a lot of marketing and uh, social she media is, work with she you guys. She, she hooked us up with you, and she you've been great. I really, really, really want to thank you from star. the bottom of my heart. That oh, you've, been, you've been pushing this, you know. Yeah, we put this pilot out maybe about a uh, year and a half ago, and you know a lot of things have changed. A lot of people have moved away. Logistically speaking, you know, with the production crew that we had at the time, you uh -huh. know, things have been a lot difficult in order to keep production going. And then uh, we got Nikki involved because she was a, a fan, and she hooked us up with you. And now, I mean, over the past month or so, it's it's <laughs> ball has really been rolling. I mean, I guess we, kind of our fault. We didn't really push it like we should have, but I mean. Yeah. It's nice to have people that you know are in your corner and fans of the things that you do. It's it's very humbling to be honest. It uh, really brother, is. You got a good thing going over there. You got a great cast and crew, and uh, 
It's very interesting to see where you're going to go next. I want to see what Sam's writing has pinned out for us. Oh, I think it'll be nice. <laughs> House of Wayward Men, again, check it out. we got to get House of Wayward Men on the app as well. What's happening? I know, and I'm excited to get, uh, obviously, Hamilton 16 on the app as well. we got to talk about that after the show, too. Well, there's a lot of stuff, yeah. Everybody writing, yeah. Right, yeah. Right? That's right. All right. <laughs> All right. we got, we got to get back to Blade Runner 2049. Yeah, man. I'm, <laughs> I'm, wa I'm watching it tonight. I'm just gonna say I'm, I'm got a friend coming up. We're gonna watch it tonight. I may watch it twice. We'll see. We'll okay. see how late. It's a long one, is it? Yes, this is, this is a long film. It clocks in at like I think two hours and forty minutes. Ooh, ooh that is a long one. Yeah, but yeah. you know, I one thing I gotta say is if if you're gonna if there's a movie you're gonna leave you know leave it all on the floor with, it's got to be this one, right? <laughs> You got a lot of well, I mean, you know, you're dealing with big science fiction ideas, and sure, I think one of the things that have kind of held science fiction movies back in the last few years is, you know, they kind of shy away from big ideas for the sake of plot or likability or whatever. Uh -huh. And this movie, um, you know, everything that I've read and everything that I've seen uh, isn't afraid of those things. It's not afraid to talk about, you know, some of the some of the big picture things in there and it's sure. got a great cast and it takes its time which is awesome and I mean this thing was um, had probably 25 of the major critics in you know Village Voice Rolling Stone all those guys and it was at 97 percent fresh uh -huh. uh, before release date which for a sci-fi movie is kind of unusual oh that's that's absolutely great. critics critics kind of like hate science fiction almost as much as they hate horror movies well you know me i am not a fan of critics at all but we always talk about rotten tomatoes on this show i guess that's the go-to place they on should, the internet they should be cutting you a check johnny that's what that's exactly what i'm thinking dude i'm <laughs> going to be contacting you guys 90 percent they have it at we ought to we ought to make we ought to make our own version of rotten tomatoes but and just call it um good pudding cups there you go you know what i mean <laughs> there you go. go and all, all it'll be is like average joes who have no qualified opinion no website or anything it'll just be like Billy from down the street says, <laughs> this movie was awesome. Exactly. I'd perfect. give it three and a half pudding cups, and I'd give it four <laughs> if movies popcorn were so expensive. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, you mentioned Dave Bautista a minute ago. I did. We know Dave from uh, Guardians Rasslin? of the Galaxy. Oh, oh yeah. He that made too. his mark in Gal Gal Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and he 2, was if in, I can pronounce wasn't, it. Wasn't he in Sicario also? He was in something else recently. I know he was in, uh, uh, I want to say it was like some sort of cop movie uh, yeah. where he played like an FBI agent. Uh, I'm going to oh, look man. him up real quick. but uh, I really have a lot of respect for uh, uh, Batista. I'm not a big wrestling fan. I grew up a wrestling fan like in the 80s was my era of it. But uh, I, I'm not really familiar with his wrestling. But I know that since he's got into movies, I know he really, really took it seriously. Once he retired from the wrestling, I heard that he started going to all kinds of acting classes and like really really jumped into it and when i saw oh. him in guardians of the galaxy he he was very good and i've he seen him good. on a few other things where he's he, surprisingly good to make that transition from wrestler was, to actor he like, was a superstar in wwe and what is sad is he is such a great actor and in such great shape <laughs> same age i am how pathetic is that and me for me in my life we're the same flipping age you can always hit the gym <laughs> with my car maybe <laughs> Hit the gym. too many pbrs <laughs> uh, i'm gonna stick with the pbr uh you know the but thing for him the thing that's cool about wrestling is that i think is totally unappreciated is that it has a lot in common with like um theater yeah it's, it's you know, traditional it's theater acting yeah yeah, for sure. But they get a lot of repetition at it. These are you know, some they're amazing. always cutting sound bites. They're always doing promos. They're always doing whatever. Um, and 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 in order to act on that kind of stage, like you're in a, you know, you're in the Silver Dome. Yeah. You know, with eighty thousand people, like you've got to be emoting like crazy so that the guy sitting in the nosebleed seats can see what you're yeah. doing. So it's interesting. But like all of them are. I mean, John Cena's. Got a pretty magnetic screen personality. I mean, uh, The Rock. The, the Rock's Rock. really grown. He really. I've I've seen him grown and grow in his roles. You know, he he's he's really stepping up his acting game. He is. Yeah. There, there was a time when oh, a wrestler acting. Yeah. I mean, and we had Jesse the Body Ventura, and that was it. <laughs> no, we had well, uh, Rowdy Roddy Rowdy, Piper. Rowdy, I watched They, they live. live. They Live. They live. That's One right. of my that favorite movie awesome. They Live. That was awesome. just on the other night. I don't remember what it was on. I had to watch it. 
I can't not watch it. That's All right, I thing. take back that set. <laughs> there were others, for sure. We had Thunder Lips from Rocky Three. That was kind of sad, wasn't it? He did a couple of movies, and all of them were pathetic. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. He's just a goofball. Yeah. All right. But he's back in the news again, you know, with all the lawsuits and everything. Sure, sure. But we digress. It is movie night with JL Media. Hamilton 16 IMAX is where we do it live twice a month. Tonight we're talking about Blade Runner, amongst other things. Right, Andrew? Oh, yeah. What's happening? I mean, there's a lot of stuff happening, but how, how, do, you, you, how do you find out what's happening? I need an app. What hmm. possess you to build your own app? So, uh, well, I actually came up with the idea, what was it, sophomore year of college, because I just transferred schools to a big school up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I didn't know where to find anything. I didn't know where to go. And I thought of the idea. I was like, why, why is there not an app? that tells me what's going on and where to go, what people are doing. And so I was like, ah, I'm not going to do anything with this. Somebody else will come up with it, and I'll just use it. Yeah. And then comes around a few years later, and still nothing. So I was like, I'm sick of this. So I'm going to make <laughs> it. So I made it. That's simple. I mean, it was I, – I, I don't know if I would call it that simple, but – You made yeah. it sound simple is what <laughs> I'm saying. There. I mean, it, it took a – I mean, we're still working on it every day, but no, – Ah, of course. Ongoing process. Oh, now, yeah. th- is this the only app you've developed? It is the only app that I've developed. Do you see yourself branching out into something else? I I Looks still got left some. Right? I got some other ideas going on oh. up here. I just I just need some uh, some of that money first. So I, I understand. Uh, just take Thursday nights off. We know that, right? Right. No no work on Thursday nights. <laughs> <laughs> I had to drag her to this one. It's uh, it's understand. actually pretty cool that you've done this. Uh, two years ago, my friends and I were talking about um, trying to find a way to invest in an app that kind of does what what's happening is doing, and we were looking at social media. And thinking about in terms of it, social media is kind of a challenge in small business, right? So I have a guy who basically spends six hours a week creating 14 posts. Then my corporate office marketing Jeez. department has their own posts that they post. And we're, we're constantly, you know, trying to personalize our brand and, and whatever. And we get a lot of great interaction with guests. And it's worth the time and, and, and expense and all that stuff. But it's really hard. Um, say like for a bar owner to maintain a consistent professional presence online that isn't too agitating you know and then and you know you go to all these businesses that have you know one day specials or whatever it's almost like especially if you look at how the facebook algorithm works like like if i guarantee if i open my phone up right now somebody's post that they wrote five days ago is trending at the top of my queue Right. You know, and so that doesn't give me a good idea of what people are looking at and what right. they're doing. So something like that's a great idea. Oh, and and something it. where businesses can interact with it is huge. Yeah, there's a lot that I can do for the businesses, too. And that's a whole nother backside of it because I can actually give the businesses, um, the people that are looking at it, the types that they should market to. There's a whole yeah. backside of it as well. So there, there's a lot going on for businesses as well for the users, too. I mean, it, it is in the App Store today. Just search what's happening. For businesses, it's what's happening, dot events, of course. And uh, they can sign up. I mean, it's very, very simple. Mm, That's awesome. I like simple. I know yeah, I'm going like to check simple. it out. <laughs> I definitely like simple. Josh, you're seasonal. We still yeah. will manner. Well, so we not as about six, uh, six months a year? Uh, not as seasonal as you think. We actually run year-round. Uh, we do a Christmas hunt. We do a Valentine's hunt. We do a movie monsters marathon hunt. That would be um, awesome. So right. we do we do things all year round. Uh-huh. Um, now, big time, yeah. Uh, we we really go from August through November. That's 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 the money season. Sure. The rest of it's for fun. Ah, I can <laughs> I can definitely see that. I don't know any other attractions that are open year round, Mitch. Do you know of any? Like the Hamilton 16 IMAX and GDX? Well, it's not a horror attraction, but... Yeah. Shameless oh, you said, plug. <laughs> Let's Yo, you said horror attraction. I mean, there, there is other stuff out there, but I, I think there's nothing like a haunted house, man. Like, Oh, yes. You know, I'm talking about a haunted house I went into when I was eight. It's that kind of formative experience. I know people who, like, take their kids every year... And I've, I know one family in particular, and they have a bunch of kids, and it's like when the kid turns a certain age, then they get to go to the haunted house for the first time. It's like a rite of passage. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and that's cool. And plus, we're in Indiana, so you get corn mazes and a lot of other cool stuff that, that comes with the season. Yeah, but then you're outside. 
I'm not an outside guy. <laughs> you can tell by my that's white the, skin. I'm that's not where outside. the bugs are. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Your movie uh, monster shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, we still incorporate that into the the seasonal stuff, right? So but we're going to see Michael Myers next week. You will not. Uh, we he's busy, probably. Yeah, well, yeah, he, he definitely is, and uh, we we are completely unique characters. Uh, we don't want to pay the expensive rights it costs to have uh, Freddy Krueger or Michael Myers. You're kidding? Oh, it's <laughs> big money. It is oh, big man. money. I never thought of that. Yeah, to use their. Uh, I'll just give you an example. To use a certain movie, a certain haunted house here in uh, Indianapolis used, cost them a quarter million dollars just to use the picture on their advertising. See, that, that's crazy. You're big kidding. Money. Uh, licensing, that's where the money's at. That's when right. you have a good idea, it's not the product. It's the product I, that you can sell after the fact. i, I got to tell you, I love capitalism. I am, I'll be the first to say <laughs> it, but my God. Okay, all right. I was uh, I was running a movie theater in Chicago once, Johnny, and it was when Spider Man movies were coming out. Uh-huh. Spider Man Two was coming, and I thought it would be hilarious. Is uh, and I don't know if people listening realize this, but I'm a big fat guy, and <laughs> so I thought it'd be hilarious if I put on a Spider Man costume and like ran into an auditorium and like was squatting down with my fingers out. And just like give make kids all just disappointed that their superheroes are never what they think. <laughs> and, Setting um, them up for real life then. Life right, lessons, right? right? <laughs> and so I called Marvel and I get on the phone with her and I go, "Yeah, I just want permission to be Spider Man." She goes, "Well, don't you mean you want to hire an actor who you know is trained and has permission?" I said, "No, no, no, no. I want to be Spider Man." She goes, "Well." Um, I, I say this with all respect. We can get you a costume, but it is extremely form-fitting. Are you prepared uh, for, for that kind of visual? And I was like, I absolutely am. I'm svelte. I'm gorgeous. And I think you're going to be really proud of what you see in this costume. And I have extra socks. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And she's exactly. I got a roll of pennies. Um, so... You know, I, I talked to her and she goes, okay, well, I need you to send me a picture. <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, like, what do I do? Who do I send her a picture of? I'm not going to, you know, I didn't want to send a picture of me. And eventually, like, I, I just chickened out and didn't follow through on it because I knew I wasn't going to get anywhere. But, yeah, it's no joke. And they wanted real money. They wanted, and this is before pricing like that existed. And it was before Disney owned it. Oh, uh, yeah. You know, but it was legit. That's like, crazy. I think I think it was five thousand dollars per appearance slot or something like that. Wow. It was crazy money. I believe it. So <laughs> I'm just blown away over here. We're all in the wrong business. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm not because I'm loving my job. I'm right here at Hamilton 16 IMAX with Movie Night with JL Media. And I'm gonna go ahead and say you've not met uh, our sponsor, Sue's, have you? Travel agent Suze? I have not. She is all over the country again. I was looking at her on social media uh, this past week. Uh, she has been everywhere. I need to talk to her. I need a good deal on a rental car. This is uh, this is what's great about her. She will not hook anyone up with a place she has not been herself. She actually goes and checks it out and makes sure everything is straight and cool before she will book anything for anybody. That sounds like a terrible job. All right. <laughs> she, she spends a lot of time traveling. She is a happy lady. <laughs> I bet she is. And his travel agent, Sue's just definitely check her out, and she's linked up in all our stuff as well, and she is part of the JL Media Today family. That's right. All right. Anything else coming on? Uh, since we got Shining coming up for Halloween, instead of Halloween. I mean, yeah. You know, we did, we did Halloween last year, so I can't be, you know, complain too much. Yeah, you know, and it's possible someone else may be bringing it in. It's it's not a part of the flashback queue, but it, that doesn't mean it won't be a part, you know, TCM or someone else might bring it in. Sure. Um, the other thing, too, that I always want to mention is make sure you go to our events tab on GoodRichQualityTheaters.com. Um, all our Fathom events are listed there. I was going to list off our Fathom events, but there's literally, like, 20 events. Um, we're doing uh, anime, uh, No Game, No Life Zero, uh, we've got a Miyazaki film coming up. Um, we've got a bunch of Met operas. Uh, we've got a Disney Junior Halloween special. We've got so much stuff on there. Um, and, and there really is something for everyone right now. So I highly recommend uh, checking that out. That is just very cool. Now, what is the banner for uh, Night of the Living Dead you have over here? What are we doing next week? Oh, we put something up that he's not sure of. It's over, on the, <laughs> it's over in front of screen taps. Oh yeah, there's a there's a Night of the Living Dead screening. 
So I, d I don't have the details on that right in front of me, but that is again, that's, a, that's that on the events. The original, right? Yeah. Yes. See, this is I think, why we got to... Are we, are we at an anniversary? Because the original Night of the Living 1968. Dead... 1968. Okay. The 68 one is actually uh, public domain now. Yes. It, it, actually, it always has been because they let it expire. They, no one ever snapped up the rights. Really? They, they, uh, it's funny how uh, George Romero and uh -huh. a bunch of his college buddies that he went to film school with, they all got credit cards. And this is when credit cards was a brand new thing. And they maxed them all out. That's how they financed the movie. And they all lived in the house. That they filmed that in. Sounds familiar. And it was like, uh, yes, it <laughs> does. Away with me. It, it was basically a, a project that a bunch of college buddies did, and they didn't think it would go anywhere, so they didn't bother to invest in, you know, making sure they secured any of the licensing. And I think after like five years, it reverted to public domain. So it almost has always been public domain. You don't have to pay any rights or any royalties to have any kind of public showing of the original Night of the Living Dead. Yeah, that's cool, man. And this is one night only, October 25th, and it is Rift Tracks. Oh, yes. Live. The Rift Tracks Live. Yeah, have so you ever done one of those, Johnny? I have not. You would really like it. I, I would absolutely love it. I know. It would, oh, that would be fun. That would be a lot of fun. Yeah, we should come see one. Oh, I was going to say we're going to do a show. We're going to start a new show. And just Rift Tracks. Like, like do, do uh, JL Media over Rift Tracks? We'll, like a Rift Tracks on a Rift we'll, Tracks? We'll Mitch Tracks it. <laughs> 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 we'll Mitch Tracks it. I like that. How's the Wayward Men? Has Sam told you about any of the episodes coming up do you know where the script is going to go uh we've talked a little bit about it i'm not really at liberty to say uh we get a lot of uh, uh late night texts back and forth of ideas right. that we bounce off of each other well, what about this well how about that have you thought about this and then we just kind of go back and forth to the wee hours of the morning i can always tell when when he's got the the juices flowing because so, i'll get rid of texts at 11 <laughs> 12 1 oh well, what about this well what if eddie did this and we can have and oh that's a good idea or now well, maybe we should try this and I don't, we just kind of brainstorm back and forth well, i can tell when he's in writer mode it's a whole lot of guys so there's no nudity right we're not gonna well, there's a little I mean, bit I can of nudity. See Ryan around, I can see Ryan running around in a Speedo or something, and I don't want to see it too much. But <laughs> oh, come on, Johnny. Well, there's a little bit of Cashews nudity for in everyone. the pilot episode. There's a little bit of nudity. That's where you sitting on the toilet when you're talking to the – and that was me. <laughs> I was actually passed out on the toilet in that scene. Well, Eddie Eddie was passed out. I was acting. Uh-huh. Yeah. I would – yeah. Yeah, he's, he's sitting on the toilet, Mitch. That's that bathroom and, and is all? so nasty. That there was no special effects or props done for that bathroom. That bathroom is. You just is, walked in and started filming. Yes. Okay. Absolutely, one hundred percent. The health department's going to shut him down or something. He's going to. It's going to be condemned. Oh, I'm glad we're not serving food in there. At least not anymore. <laughs> nice. You were trying, weren't you? <laughs> So you pretty much film in the same house. Yeah, oh, yeah, that's where it's most all of the filmed at Sam's going. house. Yeah, it's all filmed on location at, at, at Sam's house. Yeah. So you're not really doing any big events that Andrew could help you out with. Not yet, but uh, th there's some uh, big things coming up with the show. I feel, and uh, yeah, there will be a time where the men will actually leave the cave and uh -oh. explore the world. I don't know when, and I can't give too much away. But yeah, you just have to stay tuned and see where the saga goes. <laughs> Don't ask me. I'm high. <laughs> That's a, Ryan is good. I enjoyed that. What's the deal with the turtle? Let's give these guys some spoilers. Oh, Eugene. Eugene has the biggest backstory of us all. On your website, yes. Uh, well, in, in real life, Eugene <laughs> is a, a, a man of mystery. Uh, I don't an know intrigue. if I can give too much. Yeah, he is an international turtle of mystery and intrigue. Tell them the website and let them go read it themselves. Ah, www.houseofwaywardmen.com. Pretty straightforward. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter at House Wayward Men, Instagram House of Wayward Men, and Facebook House of Wayward Men. I'm so glad we were able to snap all of that up without adding a <laughs> one or a two or and of course, the cast was on Brother Brother Beer Cast last week. So yeah, yes, we were. Thank you. Episode one ninety seven, one ninety six, I believe. Uh, yeah. So you guys have to come down uh, next week for our two hundredth episode party at Eighty Sixth Street Pub. What, what time is that going down? October fourteenth, from one to five, I believe. From one to five. We're gonna have a video crew there, and we're gonna be, uh, you know, promoting for everybody. So step in awesome. front of the camera and talk about House of Wayward Men. And of course, we're in promotion, so we're gonna put it on blast and uh, let everybody know what's going on. Nice. Sounds like a good time. There you are. And, of course, it's a PBR bar, so you know what that means. <laughs> yes, you do know what that means. Andrew, 
Yes, sir. This app. Tell everybody where they can find it once again. So on, uh, if you go to any app store, it's uh, What's Happening. If you're a business wanting to sign up, What's Happening dot events. And a little special something that I'm going to do here is uh, just for uh -oh. JL Media. Uh -oh. um, all the businesses that sign up are going to get one month for free. What? Just for them. It's not the last month, is it? You're going to give them the first one. <laughs> <three, right? laughs> I'll give them the first one. Okay. All right. Just because you said something. That's very cool. Check them out. <laughs> JL Media today. So they need to let, they, it, let you know they, they heard it. Absolutely. All right. Absolutely. heard it right here. Yes, sir. Okay. Is it, I guess, is there big steps you have to make to get them put in the app store and Google Play or wherever? And to get an app in the app yeah. store? It's, it is very tedious. Uh. Working with, I'm not going to say the name, but it's a fruit that people like to eat. Mm -hmm. it's, See, very like, like to it's very hard to work with. It's very hard to work with. I've got one show run through um, the Tune Place, and uh, <laughs> I don't I don't like any of it. The stuff, the hoops you have to jump through, yeah. and now they're changing everything to where you have to put it in there a different mm -hmm. way, or they're just going to drop everything to the side. It just they just make everything so difficult. If you didn't, if you don't have your episodes numbered and linked up right, they'll have them all mixed up and screwed up, and oh, yeah. the numbers are always wrong. It's just. It, I, I'm curious so, yeah. about how, I'm curious <laughs> about them, how right? you bring an app like from an idea to fruition. Like like how do you? What is there a special software? Do you, do you call somebody and say I have this idea and then they do it? Do you do like coding yourself or so, I mean how does all that work? So so have you heard uh, nerds rule the world? Right right. <laughs> so they do nerds rule the world. Um, so you do have to find your own nerd. Luckily I was. Uh, born into the right family. My father is a computer nerd, so he was my gateway into all of that. Anything computer-wise, anything app-wise, that was all him, and I, I handled everything else. I handled all the ideas, marketing, getting it set up, everything like that. He was, uh, he would always joke around, still does, and uh, he likes to tell people that he is my employee, but he's not, he's not. I, uh, I uh, partner with him. There we go. That's a better That's word a for great it. Word. <laughs> That's a way better word for it. So, yes, um, he, he speaks the nerd language. We had to hire an, an entire team. So I had about uh, eight people or so working on the app and uh, for a while, and, and he speaks the nerd language. So the I would talk language. to him, and he would translate for me. Uh, I, I tried to talk to them a couple of times, and it, it just doesn't I, work out. Yeah, I was always curious. Cause I'm like an idea guy, I, but I'm not like a nuts and bolts guy. I, I am techno stupid. I, I know nothing about technology. Like this, It's all foreign to me. Like It really is, but like to have an idea... You you can understand technology and know how to use it and not be a nerd, though, right? Because <laughs> yeah, I have a couple of my friends say that I'm a tech nerd, and I don't see it at all. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, what's easy for some people is hard for others, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. Can I, can I just say I love technology, but I wish things had real buttons? <laughs> yes. You know what I mean? Like, every time I open a phone and there's no keyboard, I'm just like, <sighs> <laughs> You miss the Blackberry? I do, man. Okay. So miss my, my Nextel? It took me a minute to get used to it, and then everything went to the screen, and I was like, okay, I could use them. You know, getting the, the repetitive stress disorder in my wrist from oh, yeah. typing at the speed of sound with yeah. my thumbs? Uh -huh. Missed that. And I think uh, talk to text is a great invention until it doesn't work. <laughs> so always. Always. Yeah, always. especially when the better, way I talk. Yeah. You better hope you can speak right. I need to enunciate better, Mitch. That's what I need to do. <laughs> Still well manner. I am psyched to get up to Anderson next week. Friday night, we're going to be there. Yeah, I can't wait. Friday the 13th. I got to drive. See, I, and I'm superstitious. That's the baseball guy in me. And I've got to drive to Anderson on Friday the 13th. I don't like drive anywhere on Friday the 13th. What happened to our jetpacks we were supposed to be getting? You'd rather take a jet pack? <laughs> yes. yes. On Friday. Have, did you try and drive oh, that's around? That's literally here? playing with fire. Did you try and drive around here today in this weather? Oh, yeah. And I got two front bald tires. Oh, so oh, I like to live on. dangerously. <laughs> ah, anyway. Still, I'm excited about the haunted house. I think I might bring my kiddo up. I'll I'll do it. Yeah, that's that's cool. Cool. Do you guys have food up there? Do people eat while they, while they get terrified? They we actually have food floor. trucks. Oh, that's um, awesome. So we've got a couple food trucks that are going to be out there, Pork Paradise and Greek's oh. Pizzeria. Wait, wait, wait. Pork Paradise. Pork Paradise. <laughs> okay, that's Bat Boy Heaven right there. Yeah. I'm going to be all right. I'm going to be all right. Sweet. <laughs> and uh, we've got a lot of restaurants right around there. So, yeah, it's it's food's a plenty. Food's a plenty. I like that. Tell us where you can be found on the interwebs. Stillomanner.com. Uh, on Facebook, we are 
at Stillwell Manor and uh, Twitter, we are at Stillwell Manor. And we do want to mention one thing. Next Thursday, we love having you guys out Friday, but next Thursday is also a big night. We're uh, partnering up with Rupert's Kids, mm-hmm. um, and 50% of all our proceeds next Thursday night is going straight to Rupert's Kids. Oh, very uh, cool. They're going to be out there, and should be a great time. Great organization. He is a great guy. Yes, yeah, he's doing uh, some absolutely. wonderful things. I'm not familiar with Rupert's Kids. Really? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Uh, well, you know Rupert from Survivor. Okay. Yes. He started a foundation here to where he's working with all these, um, how can I say it without? At-risk teens. There okay. we go. That's the cool. way he words it, yes. That's so awesome. So he gives them, you know, summer jobs and uh, kind of helps them along and uh, is a mentor of That's sorts. cool. Great organization. And uh, heck of a libertarian he is, but uh, they don't take him seriously when he runs for governor, but I digress. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Rupert is a good guy, and uh, his wife is absolutely wonderful as well. I'm glad you're having him yeah. out there. yeah. So why Friday night? Why did you want us on Friday instead of out there to help with that? Well, we actually wanted you out Saturday, but that oh. didn't work out. You've got a nice big event going on. Yeah, it took um, me four years to get there. We yeah, there a, you uh, go. <laughs> 200 episodes is kind of big. Uh, Fridays are good. It, the crowd is going to be pretty big. Uh, Friday is a okay. once. This is going to be the first time I've ever done this. Um, it's going to be a special event where we're going to completely change the haunted house for one night and one night only. Uh, give away people T-shirts along with their tickets. Uh, we're really pushing this. Friday the 13th hasn't happened in October since we've okay. been open. So, See? yeah. <laughs> the ego in me thought that you were changing everything for me. <laughs> and uh, I was thinking that you're going to open the gates of oh, hell or right, something. I sure mean, did. <laughs> <laughs> it is Friday the 13th. It's going to be live from Stillwear Manor in Anderson right there. But, yes, 200 episodes with Brother Brother Beercast, and I cannot wait. October the 14th at the 86th Street Pub. We'll be there from 1 to 5. Uh, if you've ever had anything to do with uh, Brother Brother Beercast, past guest, friend of the show, listener, or future guest, if you want to be on Brother Brother, come over there, have a beer with me, step in front of the camera, and get some free promotion because we're going to be putting that on blast. Mitch, for our 100th episode, actually set up all the gear, and every single person that came in the door to visit us that had something to promote, I got them on the mic for at least five minutes. That's cool. But I wound up working all flipping day. I'll bet. I'm not working this time. we got a video camera coming in. we got Lori Nald Photography coming in, going to take pictures for us. And uh, Dykus Vision is going to be doing the video, and uh, we're just going to have a good time. That sounds like fun, man. Hey, it's going to be a lot I'm of fun. I'm definitely going to try and make it up. you gotta, you got to make it and up. And congratulations, dude. 200 episodes is a big deal. You know what? Uh, That's pretty cool. It, it's a definite uh, chore. <laughs> sure. Re- release it on the same day for four years straight. Uh, we've... I've missed one week where I didn't release a new episode. We had uh, Alan Kay of Alan Kay and the Tunes on, and he is a Joe Cocker impersonator as well as you know, fronting his own band. He does, well, he does Ozzy Osbourne. He does the impressions on Brother Brother Beercast that I use a lot, um, Wolfman Jack and uh, Casey Kasem. So when they're bringing the show back, that's actually Alan Kay. Uh, he was were, were sitting down talking to me about the Joe Cocker thing, and we released his episode, and I think two days later, Joe Cocker died. Oh. So I let the episode play one more week. Oh, Did, okay. Didn't count it as another time. but uh, Right. So, yeah, we weren't running one week behind, but I think that was a fitting tribute. I was a Cocker fan. Still am. Oh, he's amazing. Yeah. Yes, he was. This movie now with JL Media. We're right here at Hamilton 16 IMAX, where we promote and we market, and we talk about the new movies coming out. Good, rich, quality theater is the perfect theater to do it in. My main man, Mitch, the GM right here, will hook you up with everything you need. Hey. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We know about you, Mitch. Yeah. Well, you know, we, we, we love to see everybody, and, and we're always glad to have folks out. So, And I, I will go ahead and say it again. This is the only place I'm going to watch a movie because I can't go back to that other place that tried to kill me over there. Yeah? Yeah. I got the tetanus and everything, man. <laughs> oh, come that's, on That's now. the inside joke we're talking uh. about. But, yes, not just haunted houses are rites of passage. I was talking to a couple in here earlier today when I was setting up. They brought uh, their kid to a movie for the very first time because he went to the potty by himself. Oh, wow. So a quick shout-out to them, and I've already forgotten <laughs> the quick, couple's name. Quick shout-out to the potty. And we're going to go see your very first movie in a the theater, and it's right here at Hamilton 69 Max. Guys, thanks for being on the show tonight. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Johnny.